Charles V, Charles Kento, Holy Roman Emperor, Archduke of Austria, 1519 and 1556, King of Spain, Lord of the Netherlands, Duke of Burgundy, first European, first European Emperor of the Inca. What does it mean to be covetous? What does it mean to desire something so eagerly that you ignore all reason, all righteousness? You ignore what's right to get something someone else has. You don't care if they have it justly by nature. You don't care if it's a natural thing that they are supposed to have. You see it, you want it. Yeah, it's a human problem, you know. It's a human problem, right? Humans like to take things and they don't care about the consequences. They like to take something they want just because they want it. That's a human problem, right? Well, for us, it starts right here. With the more or more war, my not? I mean, I'm not going to start it with, you know, uh, my nagas in the, in the gangs. I'm not going to start it with my nagas, you know, uh, that are so broken today, you know, because they lost it all already. I'm going to start it with these Nagas right here that got it, man. To want something so eagerly, to desire something to where you ignore what's right. See, covetous leads to adultery. Right, You want somebody's significant other so bad. You desire, you know, you, it leads to these thoughts, leads to your actions. It leads to thievery, right? In Charles's case, <laughs> he wants their land. He wants the Inca land. He wants America. <clears throat> yeah, Charles V wants... Home sweet home. It leads to murder, mortar. <laughs> I'm talking more or more war. It leads to more mortar. We see that in the streets all the time. The covet is hard. You know, it's bigger than jealousy, you know, envy. It, it's Seeing something and not feeling like you good enough to attain it on your own, you it leads to jealousy, you know what I'm saying? Eagerly desiring what someone else got, it leads to the jealousy and envy that leads to these other things, you know. So far we got vanity. This is part number four, man. Get the rest of the parts, click the links below. Part four. Of the Cold Keeper series. We talked vanity. We talked adultery. We talked mortar. Now we're talking covetous. What does it mean? What does it mean, man? Psalms 83. Keep not your silence, hold not your peace, be not still. Why? Your enemies are in an uproar. Why? What do they want? What's their problem? <laughs> and they that hate you, Hawa, have lifted up the head 
and they hold crafty converse against your people and take counsel against your treasured ones. They have said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation. They bring their Christianity looking like you to people that look like us. They have said, come, let us cut us, cut them off from being a nation. The name Israel may be no more remembered. For they have consulted together with one consent against you. Do they make a covenant against Hawa? They can't feel you. They done made a covenant against Hawa. And a covenant against the war means they made treaties. They made a deal with the devil, man. They made a they made a deal that involves them cutting you off from being a nation. God, <clears throat> let's go. <laughs> we popping off, man. I've been waiting to get to this, man. I've been waiting to get to this point, man. <laughs> let's talk covetous, man. So. We see clearly, you know, we see that covetous, you know, like we say, it leads to many things. Is it a transgression to, to covet? Is covet, to covet in itself, is that wrong? Is that a sin? Is that evil to covet? Or is coveting your neighbor's Things, your neighbor's stuff, that which belongs to your neighbor, your brother, your sister, your tribe. Knowing that it would lead to possibly such transgressions as murder and thievery, and adultery, vanity, and pretty much everything else. <laughs> you know, with this heart bone, reminds us of the uh, Sylvanus, teachings of Sylvanus out the Nag Hammadi saying, get those thoughts out your head. That's where it all begins. These evil wild beasts. You got to control these evil wild beasts. You got to get these thoughts out your head, bone. These evil wild beasts. These thoughts. Oh, I want that. Nah, I don't want something like it. I want that. I want what he got. I want what she got. You got to control these evil, wild beasts. We're talking covetous. What does it mean to be covetous? We know they consulted with one consent, man. We see that. <laughs> We know what we talking about. <laughs> yeah, we got you, Charles, man. We got you, man. 1500s. Same time they finding us. And you got your head up. You are desiring. You got some longing eyes. Oh, Charlesy. You got some longing, haughty eyes. Remember, this is haughty eye Charles. The H-E-C. Haughty eye Charles. Haughty eye, Charles. Yeah, we still talking Charles V. Probably Charles, right? Yeah, Holy Roman Emperor, 1525. European. Yeah. The European. First subsequent European Emperor. Holy Roman Emperor. Charles V. Charles Kento. 15th Inca Emperor, which means there were 14 successive lines of Inca Emperors prior to old Charles, the boy coming in with the hijack. What does it mean to covet? To 
cover the scepter. To cut us off from being a nation. See, covetous leads to hatred. You know, you ever, uh, you know, heard about somebody that's such a hater, like supreme haters, like they just hate, hate, you know, they they can't see no good. They they just got to find something terrible, something they got to make themselves, you know what I'm saying, some target, you know. <laughs> They got to hate so much, you know, to, you know, make you, you know, someone who's hating on them. They hate you so much, they want to make it look like you hating on them. Before that hate can brew up to that temperature, that Naga already had a covetous heart. They were already looking at what you got counting your pockets, you know, assuming, you know, uh, <laughs> something about somebody else in somebody else's business. The covetous of, of your time, of your frequency, of your energy, of your confidence. It's not just about money. I've seen Rich men jealous of poor men based on their swag alone because they got, you know, certain confidence, a certain flow. That so-called poor man got it all. <laughs> all they need is that break. All they need is that one little click clack. But they got they got the flow. They're they're supremely confident, and that's enough to make <laughs> a covetous heart turn into hatred. I've experienced it. We've experienced it all. You know, we've, we've been on, you know, we're all guilty. You know what I'm saying? It's not about pointing a finger at Charles boy. We're all guilty of having covered his hearts at some point about something. You know what I'm saying? We, we all have to check ourselves, check our intentions. But to get to a point where you are slaughtering Nagas to get what they got, to get to a point where you are, cutting Nagas off from being a nation so that Hawaii's people are no more remembered? Oh, we got another level of covetous. Why are they covetous? Well, let's go a few chapters ahead. That was Psalm 83. Let's go to Psalm 89. I will sing the mercies of Hawa forever to all generations will I make known your faithfulness with my mouth, for I have said forever is mercy built. <clears throat> in very in the very heavens thou did establish your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen. Whoa. So before they before anyone looks at you and gets covetous and says, let's cut them off for being a nation. You got to remember they've taken counsel against Hawa's treasured ones. So we all got this sickness. I want to begin with the perspective of you, my Naga, of you being the target of covetousness of your own, you know, from your own brothers, from your own sisters, so that you're not surprised to see it today. There was never no black unity, no black power. All these Nagas will be so-called black. It's tribal war. It's covetous hearts. Because they hold crafty council, councils of Nicaea, council of Trent. They hold councils against your people. They are covetous, first of all, of Hawa. These are the enemies of Hawa. They're mad. 
They're angry. They're jealous that Hawa chose you as a chosen, treasured people. And most three, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You only have I known of all the families of the earth. That will make other tribes covetous. They want that relationship with the supreme power. They don't want to create false gods for real, but <laughs> in their minds, they just they just don't have it, right? That relationship, that frequency that comes with being the treasured ones. And it's not to make them jealous, man. The most eyes put us all the way on the bottom to make us jealous of them now. Because we've made Hawaii jealous. <laughs> Hawaii desires eagerly, eagerly desires. <laughs> let's 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 get here first. Let's get to matter of fact, let's get here first, man. <laughs> Hawaii eagerly desires a relationship with his children. Ama Aba desire you, right? They want you to be in cold like you desire your children to be good. They wish for you to be good. They have eagerness. Your power has eagerness. Desire to be one. You know, big happy family, man, to bring the tribe together, to bring those two cross sticks together, Ezekiel 37. Bring that towel together, meet that checkpoint with the sons and daughters of Hawaii together. Eagerness to desire earnestly to obtain or possess in a good sense. Now, that's the good sense of covenants. I said, is it a sin or transgression to covet or is it how you covet and, you know, your intentions, you know, what's coming out of the covetous? Because in a good way, we all covet every day, right? You desire health. You desire to, you know, uh, feed your family, you know what I'm saying, and, and have abundance for your children, your children's children, you desire that. I pray that you desire to be most high over everything and to be a cold keeper. We desire to build a fence. We are wishing to see our blue, purple, red fence popping off. You know, we are coveting in a good sense to desire earnestly to obtain or possess what a wall of protection, a, a secure breath. Or you can desire inordinately to desire that which is unlawful. Well, if it's unlawful, <laughs> you then you're desiring, you're desiring what is out of the code of Hawa, you know, outside the law. Your covenant is leading to you being out of code. Two different frequencies of desire. There's a healthy desire and there's an unhealthy desire. You know, mama, uh, mama always told me, all love ain't good love. All tawab ain't good tawab. <laughs> or, you know, all ahab ain't good ain't tawab ahab. All ahab ain't tawab ahab. And that's Big facts. You can have somebody that ahobs you, you know, so much that it's negative. It causes a negative effect. They don't want to let you breathe on your own, you know. They don't want to let you be separate and have a separate flow from them. They want to be involved in every facet of your being because they have so much ahob. You're like, I get it. <laughs> 
but you're gonna have to uh give me 50 feet. <laughs> All a high been good, a huh? <laughs> Imagine a boyfriend, a girlfriend, <laughs> or a husband and wife, you know, that you know the husband follows the wife everywhere she go <laughs> and the, the wife, oh I love you so much. I just I have to track. I have to put a tracker on your car just to track where you're at because I just have to know where you're at. That's not good, eh, huh? I just got to talk to you. I just got to talk to you. I got to talk to you. That's not good, eh, huh? <laughs> Or you can a hop to a point, you know, in a good sense where, you know, you desire the health and the, you know, I mean, the mental health, the spiritual health, the, the frequency, you know, the, the crystallization of each other. And you know how to balance that and build, you know what I'm saying? And that's good a hop, man. So it's coming in a sense, a good sense or a bad sense. A good desire or a bad desire? What's the desire? Is it lawful or is it unlawful? We're talking covetous, man, with a dragonfly perspective. This is part four of our Cold Keeper series. Let's go. Covet, mid-13th century. Okay, here we go. The covet is the desire etymology or <clears throat> or to wish for inordinately or without regard for the right of other. Very interesting. So in 1800, they are breaking down both sides, you know, a good desire and an inordinate desire. Just in the verb etymology of the word covet is really explicitly talking about the inordinately inordinate desire or without regard for the right of others hmm. without regard for the right of others look at Charles he just wants what Charles wants he ain't regarding the right of you he has desirous eyes. Now, is this a good desire or a bad desire? Does he want to see you in the goods or the bads? And when did this so-called black power take place? Did it take place with Atlantis and Lemuria? Nah. Wait, so you want us to do something that's never been done before where all these melanated tribes combine under the flag of black power all these melanated tribes combine to fight against what man do you know who's behind do you know who's behind this uh veil here man you know who was ordering your destruction in america man You know what has been done before? A wise saving is people. Ama giving favor and that, that wisdom, that breath to our sons and daughters. Like that's happened before. We've got that breath of security before. We just can't fumble the bag, man. Because the bag ain't money. <laughs> My nugget the bag is everything. Land. Treasures. But you are the treasure one. And this is why they mad, son. This is why Charles is mad. You are thy people, a wise people. This is why they mad. They must cut us off from being a nation, man. They must. They must. They must. They must. 
They don't want you to be in remembrance no more. Hashira. All of them, man. All of them join together against you. All of them do this to make one consent. I will sing of the mercies of Hawa forever to all generations while I make known your faithfulness with my mouth. For I have said forever his mercy built in the very heavens. Thou doest establish your faithfulness. I have made a covenant with my chosen. This is why they mad, son. I mean, this is really the heart of a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? A naga could be in the hood or whatever, man, and, you know, he got it all popping, and he looks like the chosen. He looks like the chosen. Well, look at the car he's driving. Look at his, look at his ladies. Look at his outfit. Look at it. Look at his flow, man. He looks like the chosen one. That makes other people mad. That makes other people jealous. Crabs in a barrel. You getting your stuff together. You moving up. How we know whatever that is for you. Somebody looking at you mad. Crabs in a barrel. You know, you at work. You doing good at work. You popping off. You get that raise. Somebody looking at you like you don't deserve it, man. You live your life, man. And <clears throat> you know, you go through. You go through the turmoil you got to go through. You get through that turmoil, somebody mad you got through. You left that lifestyle, somebody mad you chose up. Choosing up, always leave somebody mad. Always leave somebody with a covenant's heart because deep down, they wish they could do the same thing. You know, you got put in charge of something, you know, you got, you know, raised up, you know what I'm saying, and, 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 and given leadership. Somebody mad and say, you don't deserve leadership. You don't deserve to pop off. You don't deserve for, you know, us to listen to you. Who do you think you are? Covetous is embedded so deep within our tribe and I want you to see why why we don't trust each other because it's not about trusting black people man <laughs> that's an illusion it's about what tribe you from what intention you coming in are you coming here to separate me from my power are you coming here to cut me off from being a nation I have made a covenant with my chosen Hawassa. I have sworn into David, my servant, Dawi. This is why they mad. They want Hawa to swear into their uh, chosen one. <laughs> if if Hawa made an oath with Khan Dawi of the house of Hawa Uda, the house of Judah, they want that covenant with their house. They want to be the treasure ones. They want the treasures, man. This is why they mad. That's why Charles is mad. Forever will I establish your seed and build up your throne to all generations. This is what Hawa does for all generations. Who do you think you got here without the cold? Yeah, I mean, Hawa loves Dawi. But Dawi is established for you, my naga. A shepherd needs a flock, needs a ranch's 
righteous branch, a righteous shoot, right? You think you can do it? While being lawless, I will appoint him my firstborn. You think the firstborn is just in place to be the firstborn? I'm not in the New Test. I'm talking about the firstborn. Highest of the kings of the earth. This is why they mad. They don't have no covenant and their con is not the highest con on the earth. Their chiefs and their cons, they have to pay tribute to Preston John. They're covetous of the land and the power. <clears throat> I mean, money, power, respect in the hood, right? You got first to get the money, then you get the power, right? So they're jealous of the power, the money, is a conduit to get to the power, the control. But they never will have the power or the con because they're not the highest of the kings of the earth. And they're damn sure not the firstborn bond. This is why they mad, son. So we're doing this to show you we're starting here in a more and more war and we got to apply that to, you know, from these tribes going at each other, taking over each other, cutting each other off from being a nation to what we're doing today and how we're emulating that and copying that and reflecting that in our hoods today, man. And your project today, crabs in a barrel. Everybody want to be the king. Everybody want to be kingpin. We on some takeover stuff. We jacking without a heart. We killing without a heart. You know how many Nagas Charles had to slay to be the first European emperor of the Inca? You know how much land this tribe lost? And I'm just speaking from any conquistador, colonizer, whatever the case is, all that slang and genocide just to take, all that just to take from you. Do they ever want to give it back? Black man, black man? Or you just want us to fall into some black power hole and say, yeah, we're black, man. We got to march for black people. Another brother, yeah, brother. Yeah, brother. <laughs> that covered his heart don't make you my brother, though. Keeping the cold. Put you in the frequency of brotherhood and sisterhood. Because how can you be a brother if you are bringing other gods to the tribe. This is why we call it the nine code. Christianity was split into 10 commandments. But I ask you, are these separate commandments? What they will call one and two, no other gods before me, no graven images. <laughs> what do you do with the graven images? You put the gods before Hawa. It's all the same commandment. Explained. I mean, between rule number one and the keep the Shabbat, I mean, these are the most thorough, thoroughly explained codes, you know, in the nine code. So the first, no other gods, and what they would call the second, no graven images, are all the same transgression. You're carving something you're worshiping something before the creator then it goes into vanity which we got before which is deep because it's not just being vain it's taking Hawa's name what's Hawa's name
when you talk that ha, that breath, that wah, that foundation, you're taking your foundation and you're throwing it away because you're treating it as vanity. It's not, it's not anything. Imagine having a vain relationship with somebody. It's not real. They ain't into you. You ain't feeling it. That's what we're doing with Hawaii. Using Hawaii's name to say, yeah, you know, well, Hawaii wants us, you know, Hawaii says do that. Hawaii says do that. Or, you know, you know, it, it's even people just saying, God, 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 it's you're using God's power, you're using the creator's power. To manipulate. To prove yourself great. For someone to listen to you. Oh, I had a dream and God told me. Let's just start right here. Don't use your breath. Don't don't put your security in vanity because what's breath without security and what's Security with no breath, with a vain breath. You want vain security? <laughs> you want a vain bodyguard? You want a vain guardian? You want a vain breath? Nah, I know you don't want no vain breath. So don't take Hawaii's name. <sighs> Wow, in vain. Remember your Shabbat. No work, no matter of work. Let everybody chill. <laughs> Rest, be with a while. Honor your frame and your shaper. Your mother, your father. Don't murder, my naga, because covetous leads to these things. No adultery, covetous leads to these things. Stop stealing, because covetous leads to these things. Do not bear false witness, man. Just because you want somebody, just because you want to paint a, your uh, shady picture on your brother or your sister, don't make it a true picture. And if it's not a true picture, then you're bearing false witness. Don't try to skew it to make yourself look better. Don't try to skew it to make yourself some victim. Don't try to skew it to hurt your brother and sister, to hurt their foundation. Because you mad, mad. Because you confused. Don't bear false witness. Because it leads <laughs> to so many other things. Just like covetous. Thou shalt not covet your neighbor's house, man. So specifically, it doesn't say don't covet. I mean, you know. Specifically, you could be desiring with eagerness something that's amazing. And it might be completely in the code, not outside the code, not unlawful, but lawful. But to desire with eagerness your neighbor's house, huh? Oh, haughty eye, Charles. Looking over here at the Americas, one our things, one our stuff. European huh? to covet or desire or wish in inordinately for inordinately or without regard for the rights of others lust after desire right now we're getting to the adultery flow also connected with this cupidity or cupidity. Oh, yeah. Eager desire to possess something. Eagerly, right? P 
passionate lust, desire, ambition. They just lost all reason. Their passion <laughs> is overwhelming their reason. Ahab to the Hakka always told us reason over passion. The cupidity gives you blind desire. Blind desire. You rather take all this temporarily and permanently be You rather suffer permanent destruction from our creator, from rolling up on Hawaii's chosen treasured ones, cutting us off from being a nation. This is why we call it the nine code. Don't covet, one, no false witness, two, don't steal, three, no adultery, four, no murder, five, honor your mother, your father, or mother and father above is what it says on the lost lunas stone, Decalogue stone, written in stone in the Paleo Hebrew in New Mexico. Honor your father and mother above is how it's translated. You might have dishonorable Parents, and they don't deserve honor based on their track record. But you always give your frame and your shaper honor, which goes back to the code. All this is honor for Hawa. Hawa is eager, <laughs> desire, and wishes for us to live with honor, man. To possess the children again, the treasure one. But Hawa can't possess us if we're out of code, if we're unlawful, if we are desiring inordinately. Let's dig on this inordinately. Let's just get some clarity. We got to see clearly. Irregularly, excessively, immoderately, got it. So you're desiring irregularly. This ain't no regular desire. <laughs> huh? You you are desiring excessively, immoderately. It's not moderate. It's you're not balanced with this stuff, man. It's not normal, man. It's weird, man. It's a weird desire. Charles, man, you got a weird. You got a weird desire. Inordinate, man. Excessive. A desire to be the firstborn of Hawa, the treasure ones. Charles got a desire to be the highest of the kings of the earth. Uh, don't you, Charles? Yeah, you just taking over people's spot, ain't you, Charles? You got a haughty desire. <laughs> so again, no power before me. Rule number one, no graven images, don't worship nothing other than Hawa. M-H-O-E, that's rule number one. Number two, no vanity. Don't take your breath or your foundation in vain. Three, keep your Shabbat rest. Sign up. Give the creator at least one day, man. Rest with Hawa. Number four, honor your mother and father above. Number five, don't murder your naga. Number six, no adultery. You know, keep your oaths with those that you have oaths with, man. You know, don't mix it with low vibration, man. <laughs> Straight up. Number seven, don't steal. Number eight, don't bear no false witness. Number nine, don't covet. 
So we kind of went and doing our cold keeper series. I'm just going with whatever's on my heart bone, you know. But you know, hey, you know the rules and the name of the flow. We're going to talk about it, you know, in no specific order, you know. I'm just going to talk about it as I feel the tribe needs to hear it. Whatever one's next is what is is what's next. <laughs> but we always talk about the code all together. We you know, we're talking about it specifically, man. So let's go. What does it mean, man? Interesting little <laughs> interesting one too here. Uh, what does it mean to covet or is it dangerous from Bible study tools dot com? What is coveting? And what does the Bible say about it? We are created to desire some desires stem from our needs, like our craving for food and rest. Other desires originate from our wants, like our longing for trends and excess. Let's just, uh, <laughs> while they're talking trends, let's address this social media elephant in the room. <laughs> He's over there jealous of her uh, views, man, her, her likes, man. <laughs> He's like, oh, man, you got how many followers, man? Oh, man, I need to do something. Social media is bringing the worst out the tribe. All across the planet. I mean, we trying to KTC, but the vanity is on an all-time high. You know, all my nuggets, man, you know. Some way, shape, or form, you know, we are putting the energy, the frequency of social media. In some, in some ways, man, we we get up and look at our phones and stuff before we even say a prayer, man. We are out of code. Social media, the construct, is becoming like a god. And we're giving it our attention, just like the TV, right? We are, we're, we're honoring it and worshiping it with all this attention we're giving it. Vanity is coming out of this. Now, we know we got some crystallization going on as well. But overall, this is what we're seeing. It's leading to murder. Adultery, stealing, not just getting jacked because of social media. A lot of bear false witness because they just commenting and going crazy and saying whatever they want to say. A lot of covetous because they're always lurking on your page, right? <laughs> Man, once you observe then you make the corrections, my naga. We just here to make the corrections. While we can distinguish between wants and needs, both categories lead us to conclude that we are not self-sustained or self-satisfied. We require outside provisioning, and when that provisioning arrives, we take pleasure in it. Our good creator designed us to have needs and wants so that we might know him and delight in him as our provider and sustainer. He did not create us as robots that lack feeling or gratitude. Instead, he gave us the ability to crave and savor. Consider how lackluster life would be without the satisfaction of desires fulfilled. This part of us is sacred because it precedes our worship. When needs and wants are met, we worship the source. Trust is then garnered and we return to that source as desire continues to arise. Sin corrupts our God-given yearnings and makes us believe that our desires can be satisfied apart from Hawa. As a result, we run after worldly goods like social media, 
like a sleeve of cookies gratify us for a moment, but end up leaving us sick and malnourished. When we forage for fulfillment apart from Hawa severing the relationship between provider and provision, we covet severing the relationship between provider and provision. You need your fulfillment in a man, in a woman. We put our fulfillment in Hawa only. This broad definition may surprise us. We are far more inclined to assign coveting to a specific desire for a specific thing, like ogling a neighbor's lawnmower or a friend's house. We might even vocalize these thoughts in jest. Yeah, I man, we hear that all the time in the, you know, <laughs> in the trap, man. Hey, yeah, man, yeah. Yeah, man, you show sure are shining on them, man. You over there shining on them, man. <laughs> you know, that that hard bones, you know, they they really peeping you. They really looking. Okay, I see you over there. You making moves, man. Okay, big time. Okay, big time. We might even vocalize these thoughts in jest, though. <laughs> these pointed desires can be a form of covenant we do the word a disservice if we so limit this far reaching sin <laughs> yeah man i mean what does it mean man the 10 commandments tells us not to covet exodus 20 we need to know that when hawa issues a commandment he is protecting us from something harmful not restraining us from some good. A wise call to forsake covetousness hems us in, dissuading us from running after things that on their own disappoint, distract, or even destroy. He calls, he instead calls us to what is truly good, worthy, and satisfying himself. Covering a sin inextricably tied to our want is a corruption of what was created in us to be the mechanism that draws us to Hawa. Our want is the door through which we enter satisfaction in Hawa. Covering turns our attention from our good provider and fixates it on anything of lesser value. It leads us to believe that we can be satisfied in creation apart from the creator. Managa, and these are all great points because it's led us to being separate, man, outside the cold Deuteronomy 28, you know, 48, you know what I'm saying, through 68, you know what I mean? It's led us to being disconnected because even we got covetous of ourselves we said man we got the power you know we don't gotta keep going you know to hawa to our framing and shape but we we got all that you know what i'm saying we we don't need to be fulfilled by hawa we can do it ourselves we can fulfill ourselves with this we can fulfill our passions our desires, our ambitions. I can get my car, my house, got my credit, being pal. I got a, a, you know, beautifully put together, you know, a spouse or a girlfriend or boyfriend. Like I got all the, I got it all. I got a white picket fence. Yeah, I'm ambitious, man. I'm up at five in the morning, man. I got my body doing this and that. I look this, I look that. Why do you desire? 
Are you doing what you're doing for vanity? Are you doing it what you what you're doing because uh you know you believe that it could be a door, you know, to other things, you know, and are those things that you desire regular or inordinate? <laughs> are they lawful or unlawful? Are they in a good sense or bad sense? This is when you gotta check yourself. No one could do it for you, man. I'm talking. Covet, man. Let's talk covet. In Hebrew, it's kama. Kama, to desire, take pleasure in. You know, so we're getting Exodus 20. It's bringing us back in the concordance to 2530. Kama, kama. <clears throat> kama. The desire to take pleasure in, attracted, covet, coveted, delight, desirable. But are these delights that are lawful or unlawful? Are these desires lawful or unlawful? Are you pleasing? Is this pleasing lawful <laughs> or unlawful? We're just talking about the Hebrew word, kama, ka. You know, we can't talk covetous without starting off on really the number one <laughs> most covetous story. <laughs> starting out in Genesis 4 with this Cain and Abel flow, man. And you know it, man. We all heard it. You know, I just bring it to your attention because this is, this is brother on brother, man. Not just more on more, but literally brother on brother. You know what I mean? Cain and Abel. He got the offering. Cain brought the fruit. You know, and this story is up in the balance. I mean, it almost seems like we're taught this stuff in reverse. You know, Cain, Cain, Khan comes with the fruit. <laughs> Abel or Abel, you know, according to some sources, they got everything flipped. Like, Cain's the good guy, Abel's the bad guy. This case, Cain's the bad guy. It was the good guy. But Cain comes with the fruit. Abel comes with the with the fat. <laughs> he comes, you know, he, he got the meat. The other one got the fruit. And Hawaii's not happy with the fruit, right? He had respect into Abel and his offering. He got the firstlings of his flock. But unto Cain and to his offspring, he had no had not respect. And Cain was very wroth and his countenance fell like, here we go. That covetous that was already there, you know, now has the jealousy and hurt and heartbreak to fuel the desire, you know, to, you know, take or to murder or you know, to replace, to hate. Hmm. All it takes is any type of misunderstanding, man, for a naga that's already off balance. Their countenance falls a little bit, and now they just want the worst. They used to be your number one naga, you know what I'm saying, supporting and pushing and all that. Then suddenly they just want everything to be all bad for you. Because their countenance fell. Because of some disappointment. So you know the story of why said unto Cain, why are you mad? Why is your countenance falling? What's wrong with your frequency? Used to be celebrating, used to be popping off. Look at your countenance. No one did this to you. What's going on with you? If you do well, shall it not be lifted up? If you make the right move, you're going to get appreciated. If you don't feel appreciated, maybe you didn't make the right move. 
But why is your countenance falling? You got to be able to see clearly, man. You got to be able to check yourself. You got to be able to take correction if you are wise. And if thou dost not well, sin couch couches at the door. And until you remember what sin, sin is being out of code, right? Breaking these simple codes, putting another power before your power, vanity on your breath and security, trampling your Shabbat. You don't care about resting with a while. You just want to go, go, go. You're not, you ain't got no honor for your frame and your shape or your father, your mother. You, you just want to, you know, catch that op slip and you want to lurk all day, right? You already was waiting to lurk. You know, now that covetous is in you. Now you're really ready to murder. Now that covetous is in you. Now you're really ready to, you know, take homies, you know, this or take homies that. You're ready to break your oaths or break another, you know, oath. Someone else's oath. Tear something else apart. Mix it in with an impure frequency because of that hate in your heart, Paul. You ready to steal from a naga? Right, Charles? I said, right, haughty eye, Charles? Come on. We talking come on. Sin, transgression, couches, is couched at you, just sitting at your door, man. And Cain spoke unto Abel his brother, and it came to pass that they were in the field, and Cain rose up against Abel and slew him. So huh, that covet is led to murder. Proverbs 15, you know, I'm going to leave some up for you so you can read them yourself, search them out, you know what I'm saying, and You know, being honest with ourselves, not blaming nobody, not blaming these people or that person, but being honest with yourself. It's always the path, the path to truly bring joy to our creator that you can empty your cup, man, and, you know, be honest with yourself. To get the covetous out your heart bone, to be a cold keeper. It takes our honesty. It takes the intention to be pure water. No. Oh. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. <laughs> Your heart bones, pure water, you're going to see the cheer. The cheer popping out. I knock his countenance, but by sorrow of heart, the spirit is broken. A lot of knockers with this broken spirit. You, <laughs> your spirit is broken. You ain't ready to try above. You got to try above with you. You got to, you know, contact you. You got to come in connection with you. Hawa. You got to connect to the cold Hawa within you. So that you are coming to the tribe, cheerful, ready to tribe up, not broken because you're not doing the work, man. A scorner loves not to be reproved. Man, you try to correct someone who <laughs> secretly and quietly is a scorner, man. They don't love it. They're going to hate it. They're going to lash out. They're going to cry victim. How dare you reprove me? <laughs> That's because you're a scorner. He will not go unto the wise. Because the scorner don't want no wisdom. Don't want no reproving. Don't want no correction. Right now we're talking covetous, man. <laughs> A soft answer turns away wrath, but a grievous word stirs up anger. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright, 
but the mouths of fools pour out foolishness. But that scorner <laughs> will try to turn everything around when they being reproved because they don't want to go to the wise. So that scorner, oh man, you could tell them as soft, <laughs> as soft as a pillow. And they're going to take it, you know, as if you just popping off at them because <laughs> their anger's already stirred up. You can come at them with the tongue of the wise, but the mouths of fools pour out foolishness. But just by talking to the scorner, they're going to think you pouring out foolishness, that you shouldn't be telling them nothing because they don't want no correction. They don't want to be reproved. A scorner loves not to be reproved. So they'll flip everything and say, um, you're just a fool pouring out foolishness. The knowledge of right from the tongue of the wise. Only the wise will see that and take that. And accept that and love that. A scorner, they don't want to be correct. No matter if you come at them soft or hard, they don't, they, you know. The eyes of Hawa are in every place, keeping watch upon the evil and the good. A soothing tongue is a tree of life, but perseverance therein is a wound to the spirit. A fool despises his father's correction. Her father's correction, her mother's correction, her brother, her sister's correction. But he that regards reproof is prudent. You don't got no joy for the correction. Then you are despising wisdom. You know when it's when it's real, you know. When someone's telling you the truth about yourself, it's up to you to, you know, despise it or regard it. In the house of the righteous is much treasure. Oh, yeah, we know. Because Charles is over here looking for it. But in the revenues of the wicked is trouble. Yeah, they're getting paid, but that fast money ain't nothing. You know where that's going to lead you, my naga. Right now, my nagas is basking in the revenues of the wicked, man. Hey, how you get your money is your business, man. But if it's wickedness, it's all of our business. Straight up. The revenues of the wicked is trouble, man. We're talking Jacob's trouble. The lips of the wise disperse knowledge, but the heart of the fools is not steadfast. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination to Hawa. We don't want your sacrifices. Hawa don't want your sacrifices. Wicked sacrifices. But the prayer of the upright is his delight. Hawa just wants you to reach out. Hawa wants your prayer. The way of the wicked is an abomination to Hawa. But he loves him that follows after righteousness. There is grievous correction for him that forsakes the way. And he that hates reproof shall die. The nether world and destruction are before Hawa. How much more than the hearts of the children of men. A scorner loves not to be reproved. He will not go unto the wise. A merry heart makes a cheerful countenance. But the sorrow of heart, the spirit is broken. The heart of him that has discernment seeks knowledge, but the mouths of fools feed on folly. Back to social media, man. Nothing but feeds of folly. All the days of the poor are evil, but he that is of merry heart has a continual feast. Better is little with the fear of Hawa than great treasure and turmoil therewith. Better is a dinner of herbs where love is than a stalled ox and hatred therewith. Straight up. 
a raffle man stirs up discord. A raffle woman stirs up discord. Back to the false witness said. But he that is slow to anger appeases strife. The way of the sluggard is as though hedged by thorns, but the path of the upright is even. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish man despises his mother. Folly is joy to him that lacks understanding, but a man of discernment walks straight forward. For one of counsel purposes are frustrated, but in the multitude of counselors they are established. A man has joy in the answer of his mouth, and a word in due season. How good is it? The path of life goes upward for the wise, that he may depart from nether world beneath. A wild will pluck up the house of the proud, but he will establish the border of the widow. The thoughts of wickedness are an abomination to her wife, but words are pleasantness, of pleasantness are pure. He that is greedy of grain troubles his own house. But he that hates gifts shall live. You can't be so covetous that you become greedy of gain. He that is greedy of gain, man. You're so greedy to gain that you want to gain everything, right? The heart of the righteous studies to answer, but the mouth of the wicked pours out evil things. A wise far from the wicked, but he hears the prayer of righteousness. The light of the eyes rejoice the heart, and a good report makes the bones fat. The ear that hearkens to the reproof of life abides among the wise. He that refuses correction despises his own soul, her own soul. But he that hearkens to reproof gets understanding, gets mama. You block the wisdom, you blocking mama. You block the correction, you're blocking mama because mama says in Proverbs 8, I am, I am understanding. The fear of Allah or the respect of our creator is the instruction of wisdom and before honor goes humility. That's Proverbs 15. We just surfing the wave, you know, thinking about this, <laughs> this covetous and, you know, this belly flopping into Proverbs 21. It says a haughty look and a proud heart. The tillage of the wicked is saying, oh, back to haughty eye, Charles. A haughty look, huh? There we go. <laughs> and a proud heart. The tillage of the wicked is saying. Yeah, man. <laughs> Whoever keeps his mouth and tongue keeps his soul from troubles. Everybody don't need the truth. You ain't got to correct everybody. Once you know you got a scorner on your hand, a proud knock on your hand, scorner is his name, even he that deals in overbearing pride. Ain't no point in speaking <laughs> nothing else about it, you know. they It's just going to lead to more anger, despising. The desire of the slothful kills him for his hands refuse to labor. There is that coveted, coveted greedily all the day long. Coveting greedily all day long, man. All day long. But the righteous gives and spares not. 
and you might not have a lot of money to give, you know, it might be, you know, a conversation, you know, here and there might be a prayer, you know, it might just be, you know, you, you know, making a move, you know, to help a naga even when that naga don't even know <laughs> that they're being helped, you know what I'm saying, by your frequency. It might be a phone call you're making to help a naga, man, but the righteous continues to give, you know, however you're giving to each other. The spare is not, man. Some people just want money. When you can't give them money, they act like you didn't give them nothing. <laughs> oh, you ain't righteous, man. This is a great, uh, great script for the for the user and the manipulator out there. Oh no, you ain't righteous. You ain't giving me nothing. <laughs> hey, man, let a scorner be a scorner, man. The sacrifice of the wicked is an abomination. How much more when he brings it with the proceeds of wickedness? A false witness shall perish. Don't be lying on your brother and sister. If you ain't no witness to it, don't even talk on it, man. This is how you build a community. This is how you build with the nine code. Exodus 20 got us in code. Let's go. Psalms 10. So we see a repeating theme when it comes to the hard bone, the covetous, the unlawful desire. The unlawful desire to do what? The desire to desire a wish inordinately or unlawfully or without regard for the right of others, the rights. Long for, oh yeah, they longing, man. For what? For the treasure of the treasure was to cut us off from being a nation. <laughs> Back to that. All the code, man, is external, it's internal, you know. Every thought goes through this process of the code. The code is like, it's, it's, it's the tune-up, you know. It's the frequency, it's the crystallization, the crystallization. So that we have lawful thoughts, which lead to lawful actions. And we just... KTC, man, keeping the cold. Yeah, man, Psalms 10, for the wicked boast of his heart's desire, verse 3, and the covetous vaunteth himself through, or though he content, though he contemn, a while, contemn. <laughs> All right, man, let's get another translation, see what we got. Verse 3, for the wicked boast of his heart's desire and blesseth the covenants whom Hawa abhors. Okay, I'm getting clear. King James, but okay. <laughs> for the wicked boast of his heart's desire and blesses the covetous whom Hawa hates. That's what the wicked do. The wicked teams up and they say, yeah, man. Yeah, man, you want this stuff like I want it, man? I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you everything. Oh, you want to take down your brother? Okay, let's do a treaty. Let's make one consent. They have consulted together with one consent. This is all real spill, man. The wicked boast of his heart's desire and blesses the covetous whom Hawa abhors or hates. Deuteronomy 7. Let's go. Yeah, we're talking about Hawa bringing you into the land 
where you go to possess it and shall cast out many nations. This is why they mad. The same people hating on you, right? The Hittite, Girgashite, Amorite, Canaanite, Perizzite, Hivite, Jebusite, seven nations greater than you. Hey, who, who made that covenant against you? Who made the covenant against you, my life? Oh, uh, Edom, Ishmaelites, Moab, Hagarites, Gabel, Ammon, Amalek, Philistia, Assyria. So, uh, the same super team, right? <clears throat> and when a while your power shall deliver them up before you, you shall smite them and you shall utterly destroy them. Thou shalt make no covenant with them. Because they made a covenant against you with one consent. Don't show no, don't show no mercy. <laughs> That's what it was supposed to do. Don't make no marriages with them. They come in with that covetous. For thou art a holy people unto Hawah your power. Hawah your power has chosen you. This is why they mad, to be his own treasure. Come on. Out of all peoples, out of all people, this ain't racism. This is Hawaii's chosen. <laughs> this is order, my night. Out of all people that are upon the face of the earth, you are the treasure, his own treasure. Out of all, all people. This is why they covet us. Hawah did not set his love upon you nor choose you because you were more in number than any people, for you were the fewest. But Hawah loves you and chooses you, my naga, because he would keep the oath which he swore unto your fathers. I have made a covenant with my chosen. I have sworn. I have sworn unto David. Because Hawaii will keep the oath that he swore unto your fathers. I have sworn unto David, my servant, forever will I establish your seed and build up your throne to all generations. I have found David. My holy oil, I have anointed him. You got a problem with him? And yeah, that's too bad because I anointed Kandawi. I will appoint him firstborn, highest of the kings of the earth. Forever I will keep my mercy. For him, my mercy forever. You can always choose up in the covenant with Dawi because it's full of mercy. You've been doing bad. You've been out of cold. <laughs> hey, you're a con of Dawi, man. You're a con of David. You're you're in the house of David. You're a con of cons. You have mercy, man, forever. His seed I will make endure forever. His throne as the days of heaven. <laughs> but yo, if David's children forsake my law if they want to be lawless. If they want to be unlawful with their desires. They want to be covetous. Okay. Hey, well. If his children forsake my law and walk not in my ordinances, they don't want to keep the code. They profane my statues, my Shabbats, and keep not my commandments. Then I will visit their transgression with the rod. I'm going to whoop their ass. <laughs> and their iniquities with strokes, man. They're going to get these strokes from my rod. But my mercy will I not break off of him. 
nor will I be false to my faithfulness. My covenant will I not profane, nor alter that which has gone out of my lips. Once I have sworn by my holiness, surely I will not be false unto David. His seed shall endure. The <laughs> wise say, man, for David's sake, <laughs> I will have mercy on you noggers. Y'all better get it together, man. For real, for real. Y'all better get it together. Yeah, y'all better get it together. Because I chose y'all because I said I'm going to keep my covenant. With Dawi. Allow why? A wise chosen you to be his own treasure out of his peoples that are out of all the people that are upon the face of the earth, my naga. This is why they mad, man. This is why they coming to vanquish, capture, subdue the tribes of Israel to cut you off from being a nation so that Israel's no more remembrance, man. Against who? The treasured ones. I've chosen you to be my treasure, man. Out of all the people on the face of the earth, Amos 3, you only have I known of all the families. So I'm going to come at you, man, if you out of cold. I'm going to get at you with this rod, man. <laughs> but I will have mercy, man. Just get that covetous out your heart, bone. And come on home. Yeah. Deuteronomy 7. It's a beautiful script, man. Hawaii ain't playing when it comes to your enemies. Just read it. <laughs> read about these plagues. Read about these beasts. Read about these hornets. Read about these locusts. Read about these plagues on Egypt, on Atlantis. And they shall make their name to perish under heaven. There shall no man be able to stand against you until you have destroyed them. The graven images of their gods shall burn with fire. Thou shalt not covet. What does it mean? Thou shalt not covet the silver or the gold that is on them. Don't even covet the gold and silver on the hijack. They got their Bentleys. <laughs> They got their mansions. Don't even covet their stuff, man. Nor take it unto you, lest it be a snare therein, for it is an abomination to Hawa. Don't try to be like the wicked, do you? Don't covet their stuff. Don't be so eager to possess their things, their money. You don't need nothing from them. Hawa's going to provide for you. And thou shalt not bring an abomination into my house. What's the abomination that covered his heart bone and all that stuff that comes with it, man. All that's an abomination and be a curse like unto it. Thou shalt utterly detest it and thou shalt utterly abhor it for it is a devoted thing. Hawaii ain't playing with this covetous. Don't bring it into Hawaii's house. Hawaii's going to detest it, accurse it, Abhor it, hate it. We don't want to be hated on, man. <laughs> Exodus 34, as we start making our dismount, we're talking covetous, part four, over our cold keeper series. Let's get it from right here, man. This is something that is right on time for a Naga like me, you know, to discuss with a, my Nagas, you know, all across the earth plan. You know, Hawaii's making it clear for us. Observe you. 
that which I am commanding you this day. Behold, I'm driving out these Amorites, Canaanites, Hittites, Perizzites, Hivites, Jebusites. Take heed to yourself, lest thou make a covenant with these inhabitants, lest they be for a snare in the midst of you. But you shall break down their altars, dash into pieces, and you shall cut down Ashrim, for thou shalt bow down to no other God. Rule number one, M-H-O-E, for Hawa, whose name is Jealous, <laughs> is a jealous God. What does that mean? <clears throat> it means that you've driven Hawa to jealousy, which is so deep into a transgression because you're putting Hawa in a position. To want you to choose up, to choose the creator over the idols, to choose the creator over the distractions. You make Hawaii jealous of your time. You're, you're staring at your phone all day. That makes Hawaii jealous. Your father wants his son. Your mother wants her daughter. That doesn't mean that Hawaii is covetous to a point um, of some, oh, I'm going to, you know, I I want y'all so bad, I'm going to destroy all these other nations just to get y'all. No, you got to choose up. Hawaii's not going to shed no innocent blood because you ain't choosing up because you making Hawaii jealous. Hawaii's going to bear that, man. And he's going to put it right back on you till you become jealous. But that don't mean that you got to be start hijacking these nations and stealing their matches and cars and being covetous of all their things. No, but you feel it though. You feel the jealousy to a point of wanting to do better and, 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 be, and get back on top, man, get back in code so that you're no longer the tail, not the covetous, but what they're calling jealousy. Any parent would feel if the son or daughter started calling another father, father, or another mother, mother, you would feel that too. You in a relationship, somebody else starts calling, you know, somebody else, you, you're going to feel that too. It doesn't mean that, you know, you go and be violent and, 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 and be out of code and be unlawful, but you're going to feel it when someone's not choosing up. A is asking us to choose up. And when you don't choose up, Hawa feels it. They call it jealous in English, but Hawa is feeling this stuff. Don't make no covenant with these hijacks, man. Don't go astray after their gods, man. Yeah. Hawa is giving you the blueprint. The first fruits. I will cast out the nations before you, enlarge your borders, neither shall any man covet your land. Whoa. Covetous is everywhere. Cause that's exactly what haughty eyed Charles is doing, man. Covering in Naga's land. Hijacking. The order. Cutting us off from being a nation. And all this is in the 1500s, man. <laughs> Neither shall any man covet your land. When you go up to appear before a while, your power three times a year, we're talking about right here at home, but we got to get our order in place. And once your order's in place, ain't nobody going to be able to stand against you, hijack you, murder you, steal from you, covet your things. No more. No more false gods. You know, Joshua 7 is deep.
Because, you know, we're talking covetous. And because of covetous, you know, this this particular character here, Akan, you know, had to uh, come correct. And Akan answered Joshua and said, of a truth, I have sinned against the against Hawa, the God of Israel, the power of Israel. And thus, and thus have I done. Now this Akan, it says he brought near his household man by man, and Akan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, was taken. And Joshua said unto Akan, my son, give I pray you, glory to Hawah, the power of Israel, and make confession unto him. So this is what the Catholics get confession, but we're just talking Joshua, not Jesus, Joshua. <laughs> so he had to confess his sins to Joshua. <laughs> Tell me now what you have done. Hide nothing from me. And Akan answered him, said, look, man, I sinned against Hawah. I sinned against the power of Israel. I saw among the spoil a goodly Shinar mantle, 200 shekels of silver, a wedge of gold, 50 shekels weight. Then I coveted them. He desired it to a point where it was unlawful. Hawaii said, don't covet their things. Don't even touch their stuff. I don't want this frequency on you. He said, I coveted them and I took them. So now he's stealing, right? Now it's leading to other things, right? Outside of the cold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers and they ran into the tent. Behold, it was hid in his tent. You know, we're talking about examples of covetousness. I mean, look how severe Hawa treats it. Look how severe Joshua's treating it. And Joshua said, Why has you trapped why have you troubled us? Hawa shall trouble you this day. And all Israel stoned him with stones. They buried them with fire, stoned them with stones, and they raised over him a great heap of stones until this day. He got stoned. His family got stoned. Everything got burned and destroyed. Hawaii oh, didn't want no part of this frequency of covetous. Hawa oh, turned from the fierceness of his anger, wherefore the name of the place is called the Valley of Accor to this day. Joshua and all Israel took Akan, the son of Zerah, the silver and the mantle, the wedge of gold, his sons, his daughters, his oxen, donkeys, everything got stoned. Stoned and burned. They burned them with fire. All because of what? All because of what? I coveted them. This covetous led to all this death, all this destruction. You think Hawaii's being too harsh? Sounds a bit harsh, right? Sounds a bit crazy. What did the daughters have to do with it? What did the sons have to do with it? Was that heart and all and everybody? What about the donkeys? <laughs> And the ox and the sheep. This was a complete blackout. All his things burned. Family stone. This wasn't no light issue. These knockers was being, you know, put in that furnace, man, to try to burn out the sin, burn out that transgression. Oh, I didn't want no remnant of it. It's contagious. It's like a disease. 
Proverbs 28, man, for the dismount. The wicked flee when no man pursues, but the righteous are secure as a young lion. For the transgression of a land, many are the princes thereof. But a man of understanding and knowledge established order shall long continue. A poor man that oppressed the weak is like a sweeping rain, which leaves no flood. They that forsake the law praise the wicked. This is why they're getting stoned and put to death. But such as keep the law contend with them. <clears throat> Evil men understand not justice, but they that seek a while understands all things. Verse 16. The prince that lacks understanding is also a great oppressor. But he that hates covetousness shall prolong his days. They got stoned. Everything got burned because Hawa hates covetousness, haughtiness, your pride, these transgressions that lead to more severe things such as death. Hawa wants to save us and root us out, root this stuff out. Root this disease out of us. But you got to do that self-check, that self-healing. You got to love correction and get this haughty hate out your eye bones, man. Or else you're going to be looking around like old Charles, man. Staring around, longing with desire. Longing with unlawful desire. To possess. <laughs> to cut a naga off. From being a nation. The prince that lacks understanding. The con that lacks understanding. Is also a great oppressor. Your lack of understanding. Might cause you to start bearing false witness. Lying and. Having this covetous in your heart. Desire to hurt. Desire to kill. Desire to steal. If you don't hate this within yourself, you are not going to prolong your days. You do not get life by hating wickedness. A man that is laden with blood of any person, Cain and Abel, shall hasten his steps into the pit. None will support him. Because this covenant, what's the next line? We're talking about somebody being laden with blood. Covetous leads to bloodshed. And if you got that blood on your hands of any person, you're hastening your steps to the pit and can't no one help you. Can't no one support you. You thought you was on your own before. You're out of cold now. Whoso walks uprightly shall be saved, but he that is perverse in his ways out of cold naga, you shall fall at once. You shall fall at once. This covetous goes a long way back. I'll lead this for you because we'll be getting in in detail. The sunken colony, continents of moon Atlantis. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's going to go into this cataclysm and, you know, pretty much the frequency war kind of give us a good intro into it as we start Digging deeper, you know, on the frequency war, man. <laughs> Popping off in North America, man. Sunken lands. Oh, no, you from Africa. But what about the sunken continents? Uh, You from Africa. <laughs> what about the Pacific? Nope. Couldn't came that way. Couldn't be indigenous. What about the sunken continents? This war between Moon and Atlantis was about covetous. Jealousy. False idols, false witnesses, vanity and all that. This was a result of out of coldness. The discovery of America. Reading out the natural history mag.com for the dismount. The discovery of America loosed a flood of pseudo scientific speculation 
about the origin of the American Indian. You American copper color naga. Everyone is asking and speculating about your origin forever. And this has continued to the present. <laughs> Despite the fact that the sciences have pretty well established that they came from Asia via Alaska. Oh, no, you're talking about the hijack, the proxy Indian, not the Amaro Khan, original Naga. People who met the natives for the first time jumped to the premature conclusion that they were speaking Welsh <laughs> and were the descendants of Prince Magog, Madog, or Modoc. And we got that out for Ben Histories of America and the Treasures of Utah that this Prince Madoc is a Hebrew priest king in the line of Makir. Uh oh. Or were practicing Hebrew religious rites and were the lost 10 tribes uh oh so they might not have came out of little asia but they might be at, right at home in asia major <laughs> india major india superior and these indians these americans are the lost 10 tribes or 12 tribes or 13 tribes are the treasure ones the hebrew okay we, we're gonna get some more we're just talking atlantis and stuff Anti-deluvinal worlds, you know. We're talking about Mu on the other side of California in the Pacific. Oh, no, boss. You from Africa, right? What about Mu? <laughs> and these are great articles, man. I wish I had more time, but they go in and even start connecting this Mu flow with some of the Moshe flow, which is right up, you know, <laughs> The alley of our investigation. So look out for us, man. We got some stuff to talk about. Some fun topics to discuss. Lemuria, man. And what they call Gondwana land, man. The Wan. Like the Wan Khan. Yeah, we're going to talk more Lemuria and Moo, but, you know, we're getting, we getting warmed up. <laughs> and again, this war that sunk these continents is all about the seven cities, cities of gold. Really, we're just talking that covetous though, because somebody wants your things. Somebody wants your gold. Oh, man. Yeah. If he cares to go further, he will learn that the same story told by these pyramids and tablets referring to the destruction of the lands of the West or the continent of the Mu coincides with similar monolith pyramids and tablets found in India and Tibet. Uh oh. We're talking India Superior, boss. <laughs> is it all one thing, boss? Are we seeing clearly, man? Who is Moshe? What's Moshe's connection with Mu? And what are these lost continents got to do with you and his cataclysm? And who are these deviants, man? This is some more Marvel drive. I'm just going to leave for you and let you surf the wave. But yeah, man, these deviants are very interesting. <laughs> these celestials, intrigued by their versatility of human genes, sent their first host to Earth to perform genetic experiments. Uh-oh. Back to that inhuman flow, right? And how these creations, creations are formed. Mutated to create 100 grotesque deviants. <laughs> now, who are they calling these deviants, man? It's just kind of interesting. These grotesque deviants, right? And these deviants end up, you know, tribing up and overthrowing a bunch of people and all this stuff, so... Man, it's a lot going on. Then he got the second host. Then he got Tiamat just popping up. The celestial known as Tiamat disagreed with the actions taken by the other celestials against the deviants. So it's Tiamat, the dragon, was teaming up with these deviants. Came into conflict with few, with fellow celestial Arashim. Arashem, Shim. The conflict ended with the defeat and burial of Tiamat under what would later become Northern California near 
San Francisco. Now I never heard this before. For the dismount, man. We just have a, a victory lap. So Tiamat the Dragon is buried, possibly, according to Marvel. <laughs> the burial of Tiamat under Northern California near San Francisco? Is there a dragon buried under Northern California near San Francisco, my naga? We just talking deviance, man, which means we just talking move, which means we still just talking Pacific Ocean, which means we just talking you. Is Tiamat buried uh, near Mu, the sunken continent? Is Tiamat buried under Cali? What does Marvel have to do with it? We blew Marvel in. We blew Marvel in. Yeah, this is real, real Codex right here, man. So, you know, we're going to get to drop more and more. Just put it all together in real time. <laughs> and I mean, for the dismount, the... The genetics of these deviants is equivalent of the mutant X factor chromosome. Now, this is getting crazy because we got that X. We got that tau. They're calling you deviants or somebody deviants. <laughs> That's teaming up with the dragon Tiamat. They got the mutant X factor, X factor chromosome. We got before from this kalelus.blogspot.com that the X mitochondria or mt dna clan is the oldest jewish clan among the indian tribes man so they're talking about the choctaws the chickasaws the royal clan of hebrew women the royals and then they tell you straight to your face the original choctaw had a mainly maternal a mitochondrial chickasaw had a mainly b muskaki d now, I don't know, you know, I'm not on to the DNA flow, but they got this X, X clan popping off the same way we got an X factor, like X man, right? Deviant chromosomes. And you got this X DNA clan that is the oldest Hebrew Nagas of the indigenous tribes. Talking about the Royal Amazon Queens, the High Amazon Queens, the North American Indians, man, the Choctaw, the Chickasaw. And who's the X Clan? The oldest Hebrews, which are the Indian tribes, like we just got, is the X Clan. Is the X Clan the oldest, the oldest Hebrews, man? I mean, it's getting too good to us, man. Oh, yeah, I, I can't wait to, I can't wait to dig on <laughs> so much more, man, out of these drops, man. I mean, they're telling us everything to our face, bro, man. Everything to our face. Isaiah 11, as we get out of this covenant, remember, man, Isaiah 11, Ephraim's jealousy will vanish and Judah's enemies will be destroyed. Ephraim will not be jealous of Judah. No more being vexed. No more covetous. Because the covetous is apparent in a more and more war. And the covetous is, is apparent right here at our front door, man. Right in our own 12, 13 tribes of Israel. We got covetous and <laughs> jealousies. And death and enemies in the tribes of Israel. So we know we got it in our heart bone today. We got to get it out of our heart bone, my nugget. We got to see clearly. Judges 3. Man. I mean, now... <laughs> For it to all come together for us. I mean, I mean, tell them why they mad, son. Tell them why they mad. Verse 28. For the dismount, my naga, part four, Cold Keeper series. Verse 28, and he said unto them, follow after me for Hashem Hawa has delivered your enemies 
enemies, Moab, into your yard. And they went down after him and took the fords of Yardine or Jordan toward Moab and allowed not an ish to pass over. Man, what's an ish, man? Put a dismount. And they struck down Moab at that time, about 10,000 ish. <laughs> All strong ish. Kayil. We're going to get this word Kayil. And there escaped not an ish. <laughs> this is why they mad, son. So, so Moab was subdued that day under the Yad Israel, under the tribe. Moab was subdued under Israel. This is why they mad. And they struck down Moab at that time, about 10,000-ish, all strong-ish, Kaye. This is, you know, the work that Hawaz put in there. You know, hey, they got different <laughs> breakdowns of this Kaye. But what does it mean, man? Valor, strength, or are they talking about Gabor or a woman of val valor, a woman of strength? Kail is rep represented as someone in Hawa's army, so it is translated as valiant warriors, capable men. Yeah. What's that ish? <laughs> the ish in Hebrew. Also, ancient Hebrew word for man. Now, this is kind of going to bake your noodle for the dismount. So when they be talking about being more ish, are they really saying they're more man? <laughs> hey, look out for the brand new series coming in high. Mormons digging deeper because we got to dig on the more man, the moroni, the moron. <laughs> So all this time we're talking they issues. Oh, you this ish, you more ish? Or are they just saying they're more man? Because the ish has a, a a a duplicate meaning where we could just be talking about man. And Kail is only just talking about a warrior or a man, strong and powerful, great army. So reading this again. And they allowed not an ish to pass over, man. They went down after him, verse 28. Took the fords of the Jordan Yardin towards Moab and allowed not a man to pass over. And they struck down Moab at that time, about 10,000 men, all strong men, warriors. And there escaped not a single man. And Moab was subdued that day under Hasharah. And this is why they mad, son. This is why they mad. And this is where the covenant is coming from to cut us off from being a nation. So Israel's no more in remembrance because they were subdued under you because you are the treasure ones, my naga. They lifting up their head bones now. But we see clearly that our longing for is to be MHOE. Their longing for is to hijack the treasure ones. Get the covetous out your heart bone cons. Don't cover it. You know, no man's going to be able to cover your land again. And don't cover their hijack stuff. Don't cover their things that Hawa hates. Don't boast for the wicked. Don't bless the covetous, which Hawa hates. Because a false witness shall not perish. And there is that covetous greedily all day. <laughs> but the righteous gives and spares not. Hey, don't be a greedy covenant naga, man. A high for surfing the wave in part four of our cold keeper series. We seen clearly.
that we will not be jealous of each other and no more bloodshed, no more, more and more war with us, man. No more stealing from your naga. Get the cover this out your heart, Paul. Keep the code, man. Because a while would not give a false word unto David. And the covenant is with you because you are the chosen. The seed of David that is established. No other powers before Hawaii. No vanity on Hawaii's name. Remember your Shabbat. Honor your frame and your shaper. No murder. No adultery. No stealing. No false witnessing. And no covetous. Managa, then you got no worries because <laughs> you back in cold, you seeing clearly, and you got your treasures back. All praise Hawa forever and ever. Keep the cold, M H O E K T C, and stay dripping in that mem sauce. All praise Hawa, Dawa, Dawa, Shalom.